All right, let's go. Let's see what Exabon can do. All right, okay, yeah, that's gotta be interesting. Welcome back to the channel, buddy, and I hope you're doing fine. Today we're gonna talk about Exoborn. So there will be multiple chapters, as always, timestamps in the description below. First, I'm gonna explain real quick uh, what is Exoborn actually. Then we will go through some gameplay, and then at the end we're gonna talk about what did I enjoy and maybe also what could improve a little bit for the future. Now, always keep in mind what I'm gonna show you today is not a release product, so this is still in development. Keep that in mind. Before we start though, a quick thank you to SharkMob because this video got created in partnership with them. So they gave me access to the playtest, gave me all the material, so thank you very much. On top of that, should you like what you see, I'm also gonna drop a Steam link in the description and the pinned comment in case you wanna wishlist the game. They also will have future playtests that you can join. So once I have the info for that, I'm also gonna put the access to the playtest in the pinned comment and the description below. Now, let's get this going. So let's start with what is Exaborn. It is a tactical open world extraction shooter and is currently in development by SharkMob Studio. It takes place in the US, but this US is in a post-apocalyptic state. Extreme natural forces make survival difficult. You will encounter crazy storms that will have impact on your gameplay. The goal of the game is simple, secure valuable resources, customize your gear and survive. The game is quite high risk, high reward, the best gear is hard to obtain and should you die, you will lose all the equipment that you brought into your match. You take on the role of a reborn, these people are extraordinary survivors and are able to use powerful exorics. The exorics can be customized to fit your playstyle and will be a deciding factor in PvP combat. The game has a PvEVP environment, you battle enemy AI factions, but you also go up against other reborns in their own exorics. At the beginning, you create your own Reborn. There are not too many options here, but enough to give your Reborn a personal touch. The more important part is the customization of your Exorik and your guns. You level up your mastery by playing the game, which will give you access to more powerful upgrades. And believe me, there are a lot of them. There are also different rigs. You can have a heavy one to a light one, so you can pick the exorig that fits your playstyle. The exorig has slots for skill modules and armor sets that will help you to adapt to the terrain and give you powerful advantages in combat. Now let me show you finally a little bit of gameplay. So every match starts with you jumping out of your plane and you have this wonderful parachute. Now there are always some side missions that you can do. There are contracts for vendors that you can fulfill that gives you also a little bit of progression and quest rewards. You can see them in the top left. Bottom left you have your character, you can see your armor, you can see the rig that you're using. Bottom right you can see the guns, you can see your abilities. In this exorig I had the grenades and the grappling hook. Right here I'm just killing a little bit of AI. And killing the AI always gives you a little bit of points. You're looking of course for the juicy loot, for example we have here some epics and if you really want to have it personal you also have a melee attack. The map helps you navigate through the whole thing, you can set markers and traveling across the map is just a joy. You always have your parachute and you can see I can even go upwards because of the upwind from the storms. And then with a grappling hook you can even reach all the high places. Now, the PvP you basically have to break through the armor first. You can see an icon even when you break the armor and you get the message when they get downed. Don't hesitate and finish off your enemies. Now, enemies when you loot them, well, they drop a lot of stuff. So killing players is always a high value target. The grappling hook always gives you this nice mobility boost and although the AI in these games is not really a challenge, they mostly serve as a detection mechanic. Attacking them or getting attacked by them will reveal your position because enemies can hear the gunshots. Of course, that works the other way around too. And believe me when I tell you that some of these extra rig abilities are quite potent. For example right here, that just feels very satisfying. 
Now looting can be a little bit troublesome, especially when you have a lot of stuff on the ground. So you always have to open containers first. That spawns then the loot that you can pick up. They always drop a little bit of cash, you can pick up their guns and you can pick up the ammo. Sometimes they even drop some really good loot like weapon attachments. Now one of the unique selling points for me personally is how you can travel across the map. The storm is not always a bad thing. Sure the visibility is reduced but you can travel so quickly to your points of interest as long as the wind is not coming from the front. And you don't even need a cliff or a place to drop down to enable the parachute. If you have upwinds from the storm, anywhere on the map you can basically start flying. And then once you're happy with your loot, you can extract. You have to call in your dropship. In this case, I actually have to pay for it because I call it in during a storm. Once a dropship arrives, you get in and extract. Now keep in mind, enemies can still attack you, so you're not safe while being in a dropship. You have to wait until you actually left the map. At the end you get a little bit of a profit overview which is kind of nice. It even calculates the profit for you which is your extraction value minus your loadout value. You obviously use then your made cash to get better attachments that you just unlocked by leveling up your mastery level. Now the group play in Exeborn is not too bad. During the playtest I was able to team up with some teammates and I like this little touch that at the beginning you have this fist bump and everything. And although you have in-game VoIP, it was not that much necessary due to the ping system. Now PvP in this game can be really fast. You can see enemies are using the ultimates on me with the lightning. I was a little bit confused because I've never seen that one before. And you use the high mobility from your axe rig, the grappling hook, to get an advantage position. Also. Don't forget to loot mid PvP combat, your teammates love that. If you get severely damaged, the armor repair kit takes a while, so you cannot heal up very quickly, so when the enemy pushes, you get put down pretty quickly. But that doesn't mean that it's over for you, teammates can come over and pick you up. That takes quite a while though. Reviving mid combat like my teammate did right here is pretty difficult, so it was mostly a mistake from our enemies. And the TTK overall, although the game is naturally a little bit arcade-ish, feels not too bad. It doesn't feel like I'm using, I don't know, rubber bullets and my enemies feel like bullet sponges. Just don't run out of armor repair kit because otherwise the game is over pretty quickly. Also, reloading, eh, pretty nice. I have to admit though that sometimes the PvP felt kinda... Yeah, super punishing, getting one temp by certain people, uh, yeah, that did not feel too great. But that's mostly me being a noob. Also, third person perspective, you can look around corners and then when you see the enemy in the open, you can finish them off. Well, that is just a classic issue of third person perspective games. So I personally would like to see some first person view. Otherwise, the team play with randoms and the gameplay in general feels pretty rewarding and also very satisfying. What surprised me quite a bit was that I did not run into a lot of extraction camping. Calling in a dropship and waiting for it to come in, mm, well, enemies can see that and very often that rings the dinner bell for vulture PvP gameplay. I was pleasantly surprised though that during the playtest you were able to do some loot runs. That means you kept a low profile, only engaged when necessary and then went to the extraction. The maps are quite big so even though your enemies can see when you extract, it will take them a while to come over. 
and normally you will be out before they can arrive. Now, before we jump to the final chapters, I would like to show you the other axe rigs that I didn't play yet. Because in the previous clips you always saw the Viper. But there's also the Kodiak and the Kestrel. Right here you can see the Kodiak. And that's something that I would call a heavy axe rig. You can already see that I move way slower than the previous gameplay. But for sacrificing mobility, the Kodiak can withstand physical damage and tornado force winds. It's probably the extra rig that you want to bring if you want to have it close and personal. As an extra bonus, you get four extra inventory slots. His close range ability is a ground smash and it seems to knock back enemy forces. Although it does not deal enough damage, at least when I use it, to kill the AI. So it feels more like a ground control ability. However, stunned enemies are easy targets and you can put them down quickly. I'm somebody who prefers movement and speed, but I'm pretty sure there will be a few out there will enjoy a more tanky class. Also, did I mention already that I really like the grenade launcher? That is not Kodiak specific though, that is an upgrade that is available for all x -rigs. And then the last exo rig is the Kestrel. This is the exo rig for people who want to be highly mobile and want to be well suited for airborne repositioning. The intended purpose for this one is to be played as a quick solo or as a scout for your squad. And this one from all three felt almost the best. And when I play Exoborn again, I will probably focus a little bit more on this rig. You know me, I'm mostly a solo player and I think movement is key whenever you play solo. Also, I really love the visual details that you have on this rig with the mini thrusters when you sprint and also when you jump. The special ability for this rig is a lethal shockwave for close range. At the same time, it's also a tool to disengage from close range enemies. Okay, so first of all, what I really like is the weather conditions that you have in this game. I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer. This is something new. This is cool. It gives you a lot of mobility options. The grappling hook is something that is not new, but the combination of the two, that you can have the glider and then grapple onto something, is very nice. It also has a strategic element, because if the wind is coming from behind, you will be ridiculously fast. If the wind is coming from the front, you will be quite slow. You can also to disengage from fights by using the glider then or the parachute when you have upwinds so there is quite an additional element to the game which is very very cool on top of that i enjoy exosuits like i'm always a huge fan of this stuff robots mechs exosuits and that you can customize them and there's really a lot of options to do so that is freaking awesome the gunplay itself feels satisfying it's not super complex i'm gonna be honest with you and i enjoyed the ttk more or less sometimes i got instantly deleted although i had full armor so there are some very powerful attacks in this game sometimes when you fight at longer distances it feels a bit bullet spongy but overall during the playtest i played in total i think six hours it felt in the right place another thing that i liked is when you get hit and take a lot of damage, it takes a while to recover. So it does not feel super arcade -ish. I mean, overall, the game is a little bit more arcade -ish. But when it comes to restoring your armor, it's not like, okay, and you're done. Lots of games have that. So when you inflict damage on the enemy, it takes them a while to come back to the fight. I like this because it always feels kind of meh when you deal quite some damage and then uh, you push quickly and they're already fully armored up again. You're like, I was just gone for a second. How did you do that? So the balance for the armor plates feels really good. Now I said a few things that I enjoyed, but there's also room for improvement. So let's check that out. Now, although I had a lot of fun during the playtest, there are a couple things that need tweaking. The first thing is the looting. The looting is a little bit chaotic when you kill a lot of enemies and you open all the bags. There is so much loot on the floor. Uh, finding the stuff that you want to pick up or when you kill a player and they drop all their stuff, it's getting a little bit uh, overwhelming almost to find the good stuff. Yeah, me real quick. I just want to let you know that I was in contact with the devs in the meantime and they told me that 
the looting system is a big point that they're working on and they will revamp the looting system for future playtests. Just want to let you know and now we resume the video. Which is probably uh, an awesome problem to have because that means they were literally a loot piñata. Then the next thing that I would like to see added to the game is a first person mode. Like first person perspective that is nice. I know a lot of people enjoy this and there's nothing wrong with that. But it does feel a little bit cheesy. You can basically look over rooftops while replacing your armor and get a feeling of the situation. You can look around corners, see when people go in the open, then you peek yourself and then you spray them down. Mm, yeah, so if they would add a first person perspective for that game, I would definitely play that one more than the third person one. Maybe they will consider that. And then one thing, I don't know if it's something that I would like to see improvement or something that I liked, is the add-ons that you can put on your exosuit and also on your guns. There are a lot, which is cool, don't get me wrong. People will have their different builds. There will always be the chase after, hey, this is the meta build for this and this exosuit, for the heavy one and for the light ones. That's just how gamers are. But some of these improvements are quite crazy, like 30% damage reduction and stuff like that. We're talking here about big numbers. So I did not have enough time during the playtest. Six hours was kind of limiting to get a feeling for this. But I hope that in the future they will have an eye on that to keep this somewhat balanced. That you cannot just have the tremendous advantage by having all the good. Gear. Maybe this will influence the matchmaking, I'm not aware of this, but time will tell. So a quick summary at the end, I enjoyed playing Exoborn and they actually bring something new to the table with the storms and with the customization of their exosuits. So if they can balance this correctly, this might be a lot of fun. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video about Exoborn. Keep in mind that there are the Steam links in the description and in the pinned comment. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. As always, a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Patreon. You guys always make my day. And I thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I hope that public playtests will come very soon so you guys can get some experience for yourself. See you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.